They had anti-immigration riots the other day, and Keir Starmer, the new prime minister, set up a 24-hour-a-day court. So he's pounding through the prosecutions one after another, and some of them are rioters, but many of them are people who just tweeted sympathy. One guy gesticulated in the wrong way. Like it's one one guy just said, uh, "This you aren't Brits anymore to the cops." Like it's so crazy. He's making a political point. He's a, he's a, taking actual people off the street, and he's intimidating thousands more police forces across the UK. It's like they're putting out sizzle reels of their, you know, they're filming themselves, arresting people, busting down doors. It is a PR campaign. We have the opposite in Canada. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have, uh, the PR is we're bringing in more migrants from Gaza. Hooray, welcome home. Trudeau says that when he brings in foreigners. Welcome home, he's saying to yeah. people from Gaza. They're bringing in thousands more people from Gaza. They're not doing it's so anything. Interesting. It's so interesting that 56, 56 Muslim Islam dominated countries have said no to refugees from Gaza. And Canada is wel welcoming them without asking, without our prime minister asking, why is no Muslim country in the world, why do they not want Gazan refugees? Why why would they why would they hesitate? And Trudeau has shown that he can't vet anyone. Uh, there was a uh, father-son tag team yeah. ISIS terror group that was uh, uh, charged with terrorism offenses the other day. They actually committed terrorism overseas before Trudeau brought mm -hmm. them to Canada. We didn't catch them. When you're bringing people from Gaza, not only do 75% of Gazans support Hamas, according to their own polls, but... Mm -hmm. Who selects the people who would be coming over? If there's any bureaucrats or officials in Gaza, it's run by Hamas. Hamas has a military wing, but it also does the machinery of the state. If you're choosing 3,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 people to go to Canada, who's doing the choosing? The government, I presume, and the, what remains of the government in Gaza is Hamas. We're literally letting a terrorist group choose who's coming to Canada. Of course there are terrorists embedded, and even if there aren't, Three quarters of them are anti-Semitic by their own polls. Yes, uh, I, I I think that's a big mistake, uh, and we'll I hope we're not going to see the kind of evidence that I'm worried about uh, that will prove that it's a big mistake. But um, that's that's our prime minister. He's it's a prime minister, but I see every single premier in this country is shy. Also, I was recently talking. Um, I won't say which politician, but. They said, please don't ask me about foreign affairs. I mean, every single politician in this country is aware of the fact that mm -hmm. demographically in the last 20 years, we have quadrupled uh, the Muslim population, many of whom are wonderful people who hate Sharia law and hate the old ways, and they really want to be free Canadians. But many more of them bring with them anti-Semitism and ancient hatreds, anti-Christian bigotry. Um, yeah. And we just haven't vetted. And so it's not just the prime minister. I mean, you, you saw there, I think that Michael Kirsten's role is to be a placebo, to say to the Jewish community, oh, not only do we have Jews in government, he's literally the solicitor general, the minister in charge of police, so you guys are okay. But as a kind of a placebo for not doing anything. Yara Sachs, the Jewish MP from York Center, Ontario, flies to the Middle East to shake hands with Mahmoud Abbas. I think she was sent as a kind of human shield to buy space for Melanie Jolie. Our foreign really? minister was meeting with a terrorism leader, and Trudeau was brilliant. He said, have a Jewish MP go there just so it koshers the whole event, so no one's going to say, what are you doing meeting with terrorists? I yeah. think that, let's talk about union leaders. I mean, we could talk about university presidents, many of whom in, in university leadership are Jewish, but they abide mm -hmm. anti-Semitism on their campus. Mm -hmm. And what about Fred Hahn? The, the head of the public sector workers in Ontario. The guy is, is a caricature. Uh, he, he's a clownish figure, but he's he, he's practically a, a Hamas spokesman. No, he's he's a he is really an awful character, and and he's been uh, tolerated for quite some time. Uh, it's very good to see that it looks like his his tenure has 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 come to. But he just carrying on a tradition in QP. Uh, you know, you you may remember Sid Ryan, who was uh, head of Q 
QP uh, Ontario from the 19 early 1990s to almost 2010. Uh, he he is a big anti-Semite. He has a bad social media. Uh, if you look at his social media history, it's it's just as bad as Fred's. Uh, and he was tolerated for almost 20 years. Um, I don't understand uh, how these guys stay in for so long. And as you say, if it was any other group, if they were anti Muslim, if they were anti-black, if they were anti-anything homophobic, anybody else but but Jews, they would not have lasted ten minutes. Uh, but you know, it it this normalization of uh, of anti-Semitism or a certain level of anti-Semitism, as long as it's well, it's tweets, well, it's this, well, they don't really mean it. Well, he apologized. Uh, they don't really apologize. They apologize. Uh, that people were offended, you know, if people were offended or that uh, they're sorry about the reaction. They're not sorry that they, you know, or this Sarah Jama who's calling for the global intifada. The whole, I mean, it's it's basically the left wing in Canada, um, NDP, NDP, both federally and provincially uh, unions. These these institutions are deeply infiltrated by uh, truly hardcore anti-Semites and they are tolerated and they and they do tend to rise to positions of of influence uh, within these institutions. It's a serious problem. It is. And it's not addressed because just not seen or or it's seen, but not really seen as well. It's it's it, it's just not seen as a serious problem. You know, one of the things that's so uh, telling is the lengths that the left is willing to go to make excuses for not being offended by insane chants and signs. And by the way, I'm a pretty much a free speech purist, but for the people who lecture us on microaggressions, the people who say, oh my God, you didn't use my proper pronouns, you dead named me, you misgendered me, the people who have a thin skin on that will put themselves into pretzels to excuse the phrase from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which means exterminate every Jew in Israel between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. Globalize the intifada. There is only one solution, intifada revolution. Intifada means an anti-Semitic riot, a pogrom. Mm -hmm. um, they, they use the, the triangle symbol. That's the symbol Hamas uses uh, for, a, for a target, for a gun mm -hmm. or a missile. Even they say, oh, we don't hate Jews, we just hate Zionists. Oh, no, no, we're not anti-Semitic. We just hate Zionist. Zionism, of course, uh, the Mount Zion, it's, it's the central feature. It's the focus of Judaism. And and to, to excuse all these things with pretzel logic would be like if someone said, well, I'm not against, I don't hate Christians. I hate just hate people who follow Jesus. No, 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 yeah. I got nothing against Christians, just people who fight. Like, it's it's so, the madness, and again, I'm not calling for censorship of words, but the people who claim they do, the people who claim they're for tolerance and for, for no, anti-bullying, they have tolerated insanity, and much of it comes from foreign people. I don't know why, I think that's why we're afraid to call it out, is these are newcomers to this country, and we're just too polite to say, you guys are bigots, get the hell out. We are. We have been tolerating it. We've they've tolerated it in Europe. They're tolerating it uh, throughout the entire West. Uh, you and Mark Stein go back twenty five years. Uh, we're warning and openly stating we've got a problem here. Uh, you know, demo demographics is destiny, um, and. But you got to admit that they, they propaganda-wise, they have been extremely successful in kind of uh, tarring Zionism, which 75 years ago when Israel began, Zionism was perceived as what it was, the movement for self-determination for the Jewish people. And at that time, self-determination as a nation was the litmus test for every other nation that was created. There were 50, 60, 70, I don't know how many nations, all were created around the same time because national self-liberation, uh, the liberation movement uh, was determined. Uh, Self-determination was the big thing. So 
how only Zionism of all these nations, you know, the same time that Israel was created by the UN, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, these were not nations before uh, the 1940s. They all they all had the same, you know, time frame in terms of becoming nations. You have in Syria, for example, a country that is so uh, dysfunctional. You've had a half a million people killed in civil wars. You have a ruler who has used chemical weapons against his own people. Nobody has ever said Syria is an illegitimate nation or Arab self-determination is a bad thing. It's a terrible thing. It's, 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 uh, it's a racist, it's a racist uh, thing, even though all Arab countries uh, were founded uh, as nations that were Judenrein, that had to be Judenrein in order to self-determine. Only, only Israel is multicultural, um, it has Arabs, Christians flourishing, um, but it's it's considered the evil one. But their their propaganda machine, mill, it's an industry. That's the only thing that they you know they have not been terrific at building healthy nations, but they have been very successful with their uh, industry of lies about Israel. And they are now those lies are accepted. And so to say, I don't want Zionism, I don't want Zionists in my restaurant or in my bookstore or in, I will not publish a Zionist and everybody knows it means Jews. This is now um, accepted in the same way that, uh, you know, say the, the gender ideologues got everybody to believe that gender and sex were interchangeable so that everybody's very confused when you say, well, you know, a person can become the other gender or the other sex they don't they don't distinguish between the two so uh i have to in a way admit defeat that we we have been defeated the jews are very clever but they've been defeated in the propaganda wars and no matter how much rational stuff we put out and how defensive we get and we have not we we're losing every day on that front social media uh universities you know you've got you've got schools now that are are starting programs in anti-Palestinian racism. Explain to me what anti-pal or celebration of commemoration of Nakba Day. What is Nakba Day? It's it's you know why is it being commemorated? Uh, if you ask them, it's 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 just lobbying. Lo they they're they're instituting them in order to uh, these programs are are going to be condemnations of Zionism and of Israel. Nothing else. Mm -hmm.